and welcome to another episode of the Verde Valley Experience. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Jennifer Cohen. Of course, another great show ahead. Always something fun going on in the Verde Valley. you got to love it. Our first guest today is going to be Ted Faring. He's Yavapai College's viticulture foreman in to talk about Sedona Wine Fest. Yep, it's back September 23rd through the 24th. Um, Arizona wineries, local Verde Valley wineries all come together to share their wonderful vintages with the public and you could be part of it. It's happening at Posse Grounds in Sedona. So that's going to be a great time. It always is. Ah, can't have a bad time around wine. It's just the way it is. <laughs> and the Sedona Hub is currently holding an art immersion event called Sustaining Stillness. And that's happening until October 27th. Now, Kate Hawks will be in. She's the managing director of the Sedona Hub. She'll be talking about that, along with Liz Lermond, who is an amazing sculptress, going to bring us a piece of sculpture and talk about that really interesting event with lots of things and activities going on around it. Then we'll sit with Richard City, and we're going to talk about Gardens for Humanity. That's been going since 1996, and they've done amazing things for the Verde Valley. We'll talk about the seed library that happens at uh, Cottonwood Library every other Saturday. It's really quite amazing. They've got, now it's time to prepare your fall and winter gardens. There are events coming up. Always something good to talk about with Richard. Then we'll go on the road, courtesy of our sponsors at Cat and Verde Links, to talk with Eddie Diaz about disking for kids. So we're catching up with Eddie after a year. Wow, the places he's been since then. Amazing. Had a very enjoyable talk with Eddie. I know you'll love it. Check out DiskingForKids.com. You'll love that that too. Then we'll have entertainment, a live performance of the Jill Bateman Trio. Very, very great group of musicians, an offshoot of the Riding High Band. They combine jazz, blues, popular favorites. Jill really gets in there. Two great guitarists. You're going to love it. That's for our entertainment at the end of the show. So make sure you stick around. Now we're going to get started. We have the fabulous Ted Faring with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I expected you to be covered in stains of grape juice, yet you're perfectly clean other than the mud on your boots. I, I work in the field <laughs> uh, 9 to 5 or 40 hours a week as opposed to into the winery. I make the grapes that go to the winery. Ah, excellent, yeah. excellent. Very good. Do, mm -hmm. do you sample for quality control? I, I help with quality control. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds like a good part of the job, for sure. How long have you been a part of the Abapai College's viticulture program? I'm actually uh, one of the first graduates of the program wow. uh, back in 2014, the first uh, graduating class. Um, uh, since then, I've uh, been uh, working various uh, viticulture uh, fields throughout the valley. I uh, was fortunate enough to uh, get the full-time position at the, uh, at the college uh, two years ago. Wow. The program continues to expand. Uh, we now have uh, full-time employees, uh, both at the vineyard as well as uh, the Southwest Wine Center, too. That's, I know, it's, it's mm -hmm. been amazing to watch the growth mm -hmm. of that program. Mm -hmm. As a wine lover myself, it's always very exciting mm -hmm. when you expand your programs and more people go mm -hmm. through it. Tell me, how many acres is the, the vineyard now? Currently, 13-plus uh, acres. Nice. Of, uh, there's uh, 12 different varietals uh, currently planted. Wow. Uh, we're suspending our planting operations for the foreseeable future now and uh, mm -hmm. going to try to take care of what we've planted uh, you know, over the next few years. Now, why is it that Arizona is growing such great wines these days? I mean, who'd have thunk wine in the desert? Why does it work here? It's uh, the short answer. Uh, people don't understand the, uh, the term dinarial shift, mm -hmm. but uh, Arizona's got the second largest one in the industry after Mendoza and Argentina. Mm. What that essentially means is that uh, grapes require a certain amount of cooling off at the end of the day. And here in the Verde Valley, the temperatures fluctuate somewhere in the average of 30 to 40 degrees, depending on the time of year. And that cooling down is what uh, makes great wine grapes. Who to thunk? Yeah. Well, thank goodness for that desert chill mm -hmm. that yeah. comes in, which mm -hmm. I love so much. So that's mm -hmm. very fabulous. Now let's talk about the Sedona Wine Fest. So we've got it happening September 23rd mm -hmm. through the 24th. Gates open at 11. It goes till mm -hmm. 5 at the mm -hmm. Sedona Posse Grounds. Uh, tickets, if you get them online, you can have a discount, which is always nice. If you go to mm -hmm. SedonaWineFest.com now, your ticket's $35. At the door, they're $40. Mm -hmm. But you get six tasting tickets. I would be under the table at three. But mm -hmm. six tasting tickets and one of those lovely wine glasses. Mm -hmm. And uh, additional tickets are available uh, for those who choose to 
go beyond the six. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, how could you not? I mean, it, it, the, how many wineries do you think you're expecting this year? We're expecting 21 wineries this year. Wow. Uh, there'll be 15 vendors as well. Uh, we'll have uh, food trucks in addition to Asian, Italian, barbecue, ribs, uh, and the usual wine finger foods, bread, cheese, chocolate. Mm -hmm. will what be available. kind of wine would you drink with barbecue? Me personally, <laughs> me personally, it would be a Zinfandel, probably ah, something fruity, yes. juicy. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's true. I guess it depends. I'm, on I'm certainly not the expert in that matter, but I know what I like <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> well, see, we can go to the Sedona Wine Fest. We can try all the food at the food trucks and try and see have a wine pairing. And mm -hmm. at the end, we can write it down and put it in and see who mm -hmm. wins the wine pairing award or something. Who knows? But yes, mm -hmm. food and wine always go very well mm -hmm. together. You've got the food aspect covered. You mm -hmm. also have entertainment. You're having music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'll well. be music as well, and. Um, There'll be, uh, on Sunday, there'll be a, an artist competition from noon to two. Um, uh, there'll be 20 plus uh, artists doing uh, outdoor paintings. Uh, there will be a, a, a competition, if you will, and a prize for the artists involved. Uh, we'll also have some, uh, some very old vehicles uh, on the grounds on Sunday as well. Um, one of the vehicles we're expecting uh, to be from 1898, um, wow. through, right through the 1940s. So some of these vehicles, have very little public time, so mm. it should be very interesting. Uh, some some of these vehicles do not get out much. Right, it's not your typical car show. Right, you know, you're specializing mm -hmm. in the much older vehicles, mm -hmm. which we wouldn't see, you know, just every mm -hmm. week at the car shows because they're mm -hmm. not driving around all over the place. Mm -hmm. Probably most of them they they save mm -hmm. every mile mm -hmm. they can. But another great addition to wine, vintage cars. Mm -hmm. You know, good thinking. And of course, the art and the competition. Now, the competition uh, describe that. What are they competing for? Or um, my understanding is uh, the uh, mayor will select the best oh. uh, piece of art. Excellent. Um, I couldn't tell you what the prize will be, mm -hmm. but uh, I know there is one involved for for <laughs> the uh, the artists, and uh, the art itself will be for sale uh, to the general public that are there. Oh, so. that's always fun. You feel much yeah. more attached to it if you watch mm -hmm. them create it. Mm -hmm. So, and as far as the wine goes, will all of the different wineries have their wines for sale as well? They will. The wine will be for sale by the glass as well as uh, the bottle. Ah, mm -hmm. very good. You could bring a whole bunch mm -hmm. of those bottle carriers. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of them will provide them. For case, <laughs> by the case. <laughs> Gotta have a dolly. I'm bringing a dolly. You can load it up with all the cases mm -hmm. of wine that I choose. So mm -hmm. that's amazing. So uh, obviously a wine drinker yourself, perhaps? I am. Yes. Um, I enjoy a glass occasionally. Mm -hmm. Favorite, white or red? Right now, I'd say reds from Washington when ah. I'm not drinking Arizona wine. Very good. Reds, I'm a red person myself, so mm -hmm. I totally understand. And I'm always impressed with our local wines, the quality of them. It's amazing. I make sure whenever mm -hmm. I have guests come, I say, here, have this. This is an Arizona wine. This was grown just right over there. Mm -hmm. I drive past the vineyard every day. Growing by leaps and bounds, too. It, it is amazing. And the program is expanding, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Do you know how many students you have coming up now? Um, approximately 40, wow, uh, both uh, in the enology part of which is the winemaking uh, mm -hmm. part of the program and the viticulture being, you know, growing grapes. Right. So. So about f about 40 students approximately. Do you mm -hmm. think that most of your graduates stay in Arizona? Uh, believe it or not, we have one in uh, the Willamette Valley in uh, Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, another graduate currently interning in Napa Valley right now. Um, and uh, a previous graduates up in the Washington State area as well. So uh, the rest of us are sticking around though. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, but the program is uh, getting noticed by uh, the industry outside of the state. Uh, mm -hmm. The student in question who's in Napa currently, they sought him out and uh, he is now interning in, wow. in uh, Napa Valley. Uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, wine labor uh, outside the state is uh, becoming a difficult uh, proposition for many really? wineries. So uh, oh. they're, they're reaching out uh, all over the country looking wow. for people uh, with this kind of background. How nice. Well, if you have any interest in a becoming part of the viticulture program over there at Yavapai College, just go to yc.edu. That's going to mm -hmm. get you right there. Of course, the whole program is there. Now, if you want to know more about the Sedona Wine Fest, that is happening September 23rd and 24th at Posse Grounds from 11 to 5. You want to go to SedonaWineFest.com. Check out SedonaWineFest.com, and I'll see you there because it's all about wine and food and art and old cars. All my favorite things. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ted Faring, Yavapai College's Viticulture Foreman. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back, so don't go away. Mm -hmm.
Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Trissy Dre. Ariana Grande. Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Mateo. I'm Sean Mendes. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch the Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9 and 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Papa! (laughs) 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 Miss Lee, this is Agent Williams from the tax office. Our records show an unpaid balance on your account. If you don't pay by end of day, you'll be facing jail time. Well, the fastest way to fix this is with a prepaid debit card. Can you go get one now? Yes, and we want to clear this up. If you just buy that prepaid card, put $400 on it, then call me back and read the numbers to me. The moment they ask for a prepaid card is the moment you know something's wrong. Think before you send money. Learn more at scamawareness.org. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We now have with us two lovely ladies from the Sedona Hub. We have the wonderful Kate Hawks, who is the managing director of the Sedona Hub. And then we have Liz Lermond, who is a, wow, an amazing sculptress, just the most amazing sculptress. It is such a nice thing to have you in the studio today, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Big doings going on at the Hub, as always. As always. It's never a boring time at the Hub, but right now we've got this wonderful thing, sustaining stillness. What an amazing thing. And I think Liz can tell you about that because it's her vision. All right, Liz, take Um, it away. My vision began with 9-11, and I've created an installation of full-body life mass sculptures of people meditating and during that horrible stillness that I think we all felt I heard this whisper that said come join the circle come join the circle what does that mean and gradually this vision developed of a series of full body life mass of people meditating Mm. once that was completed it took me 13 years to complete it then, of course, I wanted people to experience this. And I put together this show called Sustaining Stillness. It includes my work. It includes image panels of John Waddell's uh, rising bronze installation. We didn't have a place where we could mount 32 feet of bronzes. Mm. Um, So I did image panels of that. It also includes Nancy Ruby's pieces. She has a series of paintings about emergence. Um, And this is another one of the pieces that is part of it called Mm. Ascending. Mm. And this is a life mass sculpture. We also have a bonsai artist who will have pieces throughout the exhibit. Clay Frankel, who I think mm-hmm. many of you would know more as perhaps one of the uh, musicians who plays at El Rincon on Tuesday nights. He's a drummer, ah. but he's also been doing bonsai for 20 years. Very and he's cool. only like 30. Wow. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And then who else is there? Bo Montenegro, Montenegro, a photographer, mm-hmm. has wow. some pieces again. The Stillness of a Butterfly. Ooh. Um, a close-up of a butterfly. Very, very nice. beautiful. That's mm-hmm. very nice. Now you you've opened. No, we, we're opening um, this this Saturday ah. um, at seven o'clock. No, sorry, no, five thirty to eight at mm-hmm. the hub is the opening. Mm-hmm. There'll be music 
uh, from Ken Oman. Oman, Oman Ken, who's a harpist and a flautist. So there'll be live music and lovely wine from Arizona Stronghold and little treats from Janice Dubois, who's hand making little treats, Very and nice. a chance to meet the artist, but most of all, to interact with the art. That The Circle and also mm -hmm. Nancy Ruby did this lovely piece called Thousand, Thousand, Thousand Tears. Tears. And we have chairs seated ar fitted around the art, mm -hmm. so you can actually go and sit with the art. Mm -hmm. You um, can meditate with the art. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that was part of my vision, was mm -hmm. that it was a very participatory yeah. uh, installation. And, and then we have other things happening, of yes, course. Yes. So we have um, events particularly created for this. So on uh, Sunday the 17th at 2 o'clock will be a panel discussion with four um, very different people um, from different walks of, um, walks of life, but all to do with stillness. So we have uh, mm. Sarah Woolsey, yoga and dance. And we have Leslie Vogel Fredrickson, who is a, a whole wellness clinician who brings together a whole lot of different forms. And we have Michelle Maddox, who teaches meditation. And we have Liz, and wow. I will facilitate. And that will be an opportunity for people to come, hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. But unlike regular panels where you then fire questions to the panelists, we will go and sit around tables, mm. which will have cloths and flowers. We'll have tea and cake, and we will all talk about what stillness is and how oh. it works. And then we have a Red Earth Theatre performance on the 30th, uh, music, dance, spoken word, happening inside the circle of people Ooh. with the audience sitting in a circle around that. Very and then there's nice. all this other stuff that goes very on at the nice. Hub. I love the Hub. It's very intimate and yet it's spacious. Yes. I don't know how you created that, but good job. It's yep. very intimate. It's a beautiful venue. Of course, Thank you me. can't beat the venue. Thank you. Just gorgeous. And you managed to morph it into all kinds of different things throughout <laughs> and the year. We've certainly we did a lot of morphing this time. Wow. Yes. A lovely man called Taylor Hellerman helped us um, set it up. And it is. People walk in and it looks different. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a new exhibit, it looks different. Absolutely. Um, and I also want to remind people go to the website yes. because we have we have our ongoing things. We have drop in improv. We have circle songs. The dances of Universal Peace play there. Uh, well, we do their dances there every month, and the Kertan singers are there every month. But right now, the art is amazing. It will be up mm -hmm. for two months, mm -hmm. and I think people will probably come when there's a lot of people, and then come back and want to sit when yes. it's quiet. And sit. And the hub has real hours now. Ah, we actually have real thank hours. You. Tell us about the hours. So our real hours, when someone will be there instead of hoping Kate might be there, um, is Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 12 to 2, mm -hmm. and Sunday from 9 till 1. Excellent. But if people want to come and see the art. Um, in some other way, we have phone numbers. Oh, and Liz is also reaching out to schools, aren't you? I've, I've invited schools um, to come if it fits in with somebody's curriculum. And I'm yes. happy to be there, talk to the group, facilitate a discussion around stillness with the group um, if they wish. How mm -hmm. interesting. Anytime. I can Anytime. see that fitting mm -hmm. into quite a few schools that we have here. Hopefully. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there an admission <laughs> fee, Kate? Uh, not, not, for, not to come and see it. Just come no. and see it. Um, some of the events will have a suggested donation at the door. The opening is free. Mm -hmm. Do come. Yeah. Um, there are suggested donations. The performance that we're doing on the 30th, uh, we will be charging uh, $10 for that. And 75% of what we make, we will donate to the Hurricane Harvey um, because I think that people go through something like that and it's intense and it's wild and then afterwards there's all this frantic mm -hmm. response to it. But there is horrible moments of stillness, mm -hmm. I imagine, which could be beautiful if people knew how to breathe into that moment mm -hmm. of fear and panic. Mm -hmm. So I think it fits with what we're doing mm -hmm. and we would like to make that a fundraiser well, that's for Harvey Hope. Thank that's you. a beautiful idea. Well, this beautiful and art the thing. last event, oh, the, the last poetry event, the ah, yes. um, in October, okay. uh, 27th, I think so, yes. anyhow, uh, the group that is going to be reading their poetry came over and sat with my installation mm -hmm. of Meditating Beings and what they'll be reading or speaking their poetry was inspired by that. Wow. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. And if anyone else has any ideas for events they would like to create that is 
directly in response to the exhibit, mm -hmm. um, we'd love to hear from them. And oh. we have we have concerts. Viz Meyer is going to be doing a concert during it. But yes. if people think, "Wow, I'd like to do something that incorporates that art as part of what we're doing," mm -hmm. just 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 send me an email. And Wonderful. I'll probably say yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Do they contact you through SedonaHub.org? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Go. They can email info at SedonaHub.org. Right. Um, they can go to the website and there's a, a form you can fill in and send me an email. Great. Um, but I really encourage people to, art should be part of how we live. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Liz is all about that. So mm -hmm. it's like, how do we create something that brings together uh, a lot of different people? And yeah. we have some different people. And mm -hmm. it, we have, you know, Clay Frankel doing the bonsai, and he still drums. He's oh still tapping gosh, on things, <laughs> but then he slows right down. Uh, yes. Increase the bonsai. Sustaining this illness. Make sure you check it out at the Sedona Hub. Check out sedonahub.org. Liz Lehrman, thank you for being here. Most amazing life masking sculptress. It's absolutely gorgeous. Kate Hawks, thank you so much for what you're thank doing you. at the Hub. Really thank appreciate you. what I you're bringing it. to Sedona. Thank you. And we'll be right back, so don't go away. Thank you. The Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Trissy Dre. Ariana Grande. Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Adele. I'm Shawn Mendes. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch The Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9. And 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. <laughs> Miss Lee, this is Agent Williams from the tax office. Our records show an unpaid balance on your account. If you don't pay by end of day, you'll be facing jail time. Well, the fastest way to fix this is with a prepaid debit card. Can you go get one now? Yes, and we want to clear this up. If you just buy that prepaid card, put $400 on it, then call me back and read the numbers to me. The moment they ask for a prepaid card is the moment you know something's wrong. Think before you send money. Learn more at scamawareness.org. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. I am now here with Richard City from Gardens for Humanity, an amazing organization. Thank you. I love seeing the gardens around town. Always mm -hmm. makes me smile when I th see things growing and then we see the little Gardens for Humanity sign on it. It's That's such a pleasure. Beautiful, yeah. How's everything going with the organization these days? Well, school started mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of our programs are tied to the schools, so we're really uh, quite busy and and more schools want gardens, if you can imagine. Go and um, they're really serious about making them places of learning and growth and good foods. And I was talking to the principal at, um, at Cottonwood Middle School today, and they have a, a cooking program and a culinary club. And wow. they want to use products from their garden in their while they're studying so it's it's interesting and I love to see the diversity of ideas that are coming from the school and see how we can help them out mm -hmm. that's really great yeah. now the organization has been around since 1996 right. and what is the, the the core value that Gardens for Humanity is trying to bring forth humanity <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about that a lot and I think that when you grow things it touches some humanity inside of you because the act of planting a seed is implicitly optimistic you wouldn't do it if you didn't feel that there was some reason and some outcome that is beneficial so it's an optimistic act at the beginning and then when the things sprout you have to nurture them and care for them so they 
cultivate our sense of responsibility and they really, I think all the social skills that we need to learn, we can learn in the garden because um, it's, a, it's a part of life it's, and we have that experience of nurturing it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, um, you know, our founder tied art to the, the act of gardening and gardens and so forth. And, and that's the aspect of beauty. And so, you know, if you combine humanity with beauty, um, this is something that all of us in our hearts really want to have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you're bringing it forward through all the work that you're doing Thank with you. all the different gardens. Now we're working on fall and winter gardens mm -hmm. right now. What kind of things are we sticking in the ground now? Well, we've had a hot summer and it hasn't over mm -hmm. yet, but mm -hmm. we call in the our area, we call fall the second spring. Mm -hmm. Weather is cooling down, a new cycle starts, and there's a whole new kind of um, vegetables and flowers that grow in the wintertime in our region. It's mild enough. I mean, it's so amazing to go out after the frost and see pansies blooming in mm -hmm. your planters and, and, and go into your garden. In the morning, it's a little limp, but it perks up and you have spinach and leafy vegetables and salads. And, and of course, garlic is a winter crop. Mm. And some of us are starting to experiment with grains in the Verde Valley. Right. Um, not necessarily Gardens for Humanity, but there's a grain group uh, using heritage seeds, and, and a lot of that will be grown in the wintertime oh, as well. How fascinating. Yeah. Now, there's the seed library going on at the Cottonwood Library. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. That's really so interesting. So we, the seed library is open for mm -hmm. spring and summer crops, and then it closes, and then it opens again in September. Well, it opened late August this year for the fall winter garden. And um, that started as a conversation among several of, uh, of us in the area that are interested and some librarians. And Janice Montgomery, who heads the Verde Thumbs Gardens Club, and I went to the International Seed Library Conference in Tucson in 2015. And we came back with a lot of information and we saw how it worked in many different communities. And we decided that it was a good time to do that. And the, the purpose of that is to create a, uh, seeds that do well in our environment mm -hmm. and so you save seeds you know year after year and native peoples did that they're still growing their ancestors or they consider their seeds their an connection to their ancestors mm -hmm. so um, it's really beautiful to see the results of, of growing out of a seed in your own garden year after year and saving it and propagating it so the seed library is to try and stimulate that idea, but also to get good open pollinated heirloom seeds out to the public. Right, that's true. And as out to the public, it is free, which it is, is amazing. Free. Yeah, well, lots of uh, organizations and donate to us and some uh, seed companies, in fact. Hmm. Um, they, they donate uh, seeds to us. And we only take the ones that can reproduce, mm -hmm. not the hybrid seeds. Right. Hybrid seeds are good, but you can't grow them out the second year because you'll get something different than what you had the previous year. Really? Yeah. That what happens. Yeah. Hmm. So the thing about heirlooms is they are true to their nature. Yes, they are. And th that's the, the key. That is the key. And they, you hear that a lot in mm -hmm. the news and things about now. It's time to really start planting heirloom things because everything's been changed so much that yeah. you plant cantaloupe one year, you get rutabagas the next, if you don't, you don't know what's going on there. Yeah. But some hybrids are, are good, you mm -hmm. know, they have certain properties. So we're very open to all kinds of seeds, except, excuse me, GMOs, Yeah. because uh, we, we like things from nature. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, do they mark seeds, GMO? Do, can you um, tell? Some you are, buy seeds? Some. some are, yeah. So and, but the home gardener doesn't really have to consider that too much mm -hmm. because um, they're really not available to home gardeners. It's for um, ah, industrial agriculture. Industrial agriculture, right. Yeah. 
Interesting. So but we eat are them. more important. Everybody eats yes, them. Yes, we do. And we want to eat non-GMO stuff. Plant your own garden. Go to the <laughs> Seed Library, which is every other Saturday at the Cottonwood Library. Now, are there certain hours that that's available? Yeah, 11 to 1. 11 to 1. And sometimes they have classes in seed saving. Mm. Seed saving isn't just taking the seed from the previous year. Some, some seeds are easy. Tomatoes, peppers, beans, um, peas, because they don't cross-pollinate. But there are other beans, other seeds that are a little more tricky for more advanced seed, seed saving. So wow. um, it all depends on how the seed is pollinated. And, mm -hmm. and so self-pollinating um, mm -hmm. plants are, are easy to save. Right. Wow. Geez, there's yeah, so it, much I, to learn. It, indeed. <laughs> and it's fun. I mean, yeah. you know, it's kind of fun to learn about the food that you eat yeah. and how it grows and, and observe it and take part in it. And, you, you know, I don't think you can grow enough um, to survive, but you can grow enough to to walk out in the garden in the yes. evening and pick a mm -hmm. salad and walk in the house and I love doing eat it that. fresh. I love doing yeah. that. I highly encourage you all to do that. So check out the Seed Library. It happens up until October 14th for this part of the season at the Cottonwood Library. Check that out. Information available there too. But check out the website, gardenforhumanities.org. You can go down, scroll down to an, uh, there's an online planting guide and there's also a landscape and planning worksheet which is tremendously helpful for those of us with, with um, kind of brown thumbs. Yeah. And I have well, brown thumbs, but. <laughs> it's so hard because a lot of times when there's just space, you say there's so many options, so yeah, many choices, so many things unknown and known. And, and it's kind of a play, uh, having that worksheet is a place for you to reflect upon what you really want. Yeah. What, what, what are your needs? What do you mm -hmm. want to happen? in your garden and, and those condition some of your choices and design mm -hmm. choices as well. Absolutely. Well, so check it out, gardensforhumanity.org. Yeah. Richard, thank you so much for being here. Oh, really appreciate it. It's always what a pleasure to, to come and <laughs> speak with you because you're thank so you. enthusiastic oh, about you. what we I do. I love gardens. I love gardens. Yeah, I know. And there's more of the experience <laughs> coming up, so don't go away. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Miss Lee, this is Agent Williams from the tax office. Our records show an unpaid balance on your account. If you don't pay by end of day, you'll be facing jail time. Well, the fastest way to fix this is with a prepaid debit card. Can you go get one now? Yes, and we want to clear this up. If you just buy that prepaid card, Put $400 on it, then call me back and read the numbers to me. The moment they ask for a prepaid card is the moment you know something's wrong. Think before you send money. Learn more at scamawareness.org. Schools have a big problem. Every year, millions of kids come to class with nothing. So teachers end up spending thousands of dollars of their own money just to make sure kids have what they need to learn. I'm the school supply fairy. My assistant and I do what we can. <laughs> But we could really use your help. Welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We are now here at Riverfront Park, courtesy of our sponsors at Cat and Verde Links. We're at the Disc Golf Course, the beautiful hole number two, with 
Eddie Diaz, who is the founder, the executive director, the everyman of Disking for Kids. Thank you for being back again. Oh, oh, thank you for gosh. inviting me again. It's, it's amazing how far you've come. Now, we had you over a year ago, and you were just beginning this project, Disking for Kids, and you've grown exponentially since then. What are you up to at Disking for Kids now? At this point in time, what we're doing up in Flagstaff, we've uh, joined up with the Boys and Girls Club of America, where we're doing a six-week program, free to the kids. We've also gotten with the Flagstaff Unified School District Facts After School program, where we're doing it all year long with the kids. And we also have been fortunate enough to be able to create a team disking for kids where we're able to take the children that have the core values, the leadership qualities, the accountability, and good grades. Grades are very important to us here at Disking for mm. Kids. Great family base. And in doing so, what we do is we take them on a team and then we pay for their PDGA membership and get them to tournaments. And you guys have a tournament coming up in California here soon that you're taking these young men to. Yes, we are. That, uh, that tournament is going to be on October 14th. It's the California Junior State Championships, where it's a sold-out event. There's over 145 kids from all of the western states. Mm. And these two little boys, they're going to go out there and they're going to win it. Wow, so. absolutely. That's fantastic. You've got a fundraiser coming up. Uh, September 24th. Tell us about the fundraiser that you've got going on. The fundraiser that we have is called Banging Chains for Bensons, and what that is, is that's to fund for the expenses to take these children to the disc golf tournament. It's in, Modest in Modesto, California, and what we're having is we're having a disc golf tournament here on the 24th. It, it's on a Sunday, so we're calling it a Sunday fun day. It's $30 to get in, 50% goes to the pot. If you want to make a donation for this event, I mean, you can go to my webpage, diskingforkids.org, and, I mean, help these kids, I mean, get to the next level. Yeah. It's a really great sport, and one of the things I, I like about it is it's, it's exercise, but it's very low impact, but you're still getting outside, so it's easy to pass off to the kids because it's exercise, but it's not. You see, they're playing. <laughs> Exactly, and, and that's and it's also very low cost mm -hmm. yeah, because, as you know, we're out here on the disc golf course. It didn't cost us nothing. Right. Yeah, and and so many sports you have to have a physical. You have so many different other criteria you have to meet, and in disc golf, all you have to do is two things, and that's be safe and have fun. Mm -hmm. That's it. You Absolutely. Know? But it does foster a lot of things. You touched on it a little bit. Let's bring that back. What does it bring out in the children? It brings out things like discipline. It brings out discipline, it brings out leadership, and that's the core values we teach. For example, Martin, he shot in a tournament and he beat all the kids by 50, 60 strokes. Rather than being pompous, he was out in the field teaching the kids that were on the same card how to throw it better. Mm -hmm. The next round, they shot a lot better, and that's, that's what we value at Diskin for Kids, is that kind of leadership qualities. Right. Now, in your group, what age groups do you have? We, we start them in kindergarten at the FACTS right. program. And with them little guys, we, uh, we have the fourth and fifth graders actually mentor the kindergarten and first graders. Cool. Because it's all a mentoring program. We have our rising stars and, and all of that is attributed to how much time you put in and the core values. Right, absolutely. You know, the, the more you put into it, like it, the more you're going to get out of it. Exactly. So it, it starts at, at the beginning. It starts in kindergarten. And how about where, where do you drop stop? We don't ever stop. All right. I mean, we, we, what we do at that point in time is I've uh, become an instructor at Northern Arizona University mm -hmm. where I'm going to be teaching here this fall semester disc golf. And in doing so, we'll be able to take some of them kids and have them as volunteers as we did last year with Alpha right. Phi Sorority. Mm -hmm. so they, their sorority ladies came down and they were a tremendous help, great volunteer ladies, great part of our community. And that's what we do because, as I said, our goal is to be able to create a college fund for Diskin for Kids for these mm. children. We can, we, can, we can track them and keep the matrix on what we actually have accomplished in our program. Right. That's great, and you've accomplished so much in the, in the past well, year and a half. It, it, it's amazing. Check out the website, diskingforkids.org. So there's going to be information there about your upcoming fundraiser on the 24th. If you want to join in on that, a half of the proceeds go to support the kids getting out to the tournament in uh, California. And, of course, you have listings of all the activities that you have going on. And what do you do on a, on a weekly basis? I know you never stop moving, but what's available for the kids on a weekly basis? Okay, what we're doing in Flagstaff, it's weekly mm -hmm. at the school districts, at the Boys and Girls Clubs, 
and we also work with the uh, Flagstaff Cooperative Preschool. What we're in the process of doing is we're working with the city of Cottonwood again mm -hmm. to be able to get our program down here. And as I stated, I'd never give up. I mean, I've got two kids. I mean, all it takes is one, mm -hmm. and now we have two. So I plan on coming to your schools. I'm gonna have Martine start a disc golf club. Right. And just, it's just so much activities out here and we've got a great little leader for your community. Yeah. And that's what we want is someone like Martine to be able to teach these kids the core values. Mm, absolutely, you know, so. it works really well. A lot of schooling has evolved around peers teaching other peers. And so here you are, you're, you're teaching the kids the outside, sportsmanship, respect, showing up on time. They're getting exercise and they don't know it, which is really super. And it's really inexpensive. So a kid walks up, says, I want to do this. What do they have to buy? Three discs. And, and usually we have plenty of discs for the kids to borrow. Mm -hmm. So that way, and the discs range at $10 a piece. They don't, they don't have to get the most expensive ones because that's not the way it works. You start off with the lower grade plastic because then at that point in time, it flies like it's supposed to. Right. And then you just gradually increase. And that's what we teach the kids. We teach the kids to come with no discs. Mm -hmm. So that way they're weak. We have plenty of discs they can use. At okay. that point, we can guide them to buy different discs from different sure. manufacturers. We don't, we don't care if you throw Gateway, Innova, right. Prodigy. We just want you it's to throw. It's not about that. We just want Absolutely. you to throw. Absolutely. That's fantastic. This is Eddie Diaz. He's the founder, the executive director. He's an instructor of disc golf at NAU. Awesome. Check him out. Discingforkids.org. We'll be right back with more of the experience, so don't go away. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! If you ever plan to motor west, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on Route 66. It winds from Chicago to LA. Get your kicks on Route 66. Now you go through St. Louis down to Missouri. And Oklahoma City's mighty pretty. You see, I'm a real love. Gallup, New Mexico. Flagstaff, Arizona. Don't forget Winona, Kingman, Boston, San Bernardino. Won't you get Hip to the step. Ooh, when you take that California trip, get your tips on Route 66.
If you ever plan to motor west, mm, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Ooh, get your kids on Route 66. At once from Chicago to LA. Get your kicks on Route 66. Now you go through St. Louis, down to Missouri. And Oklahoma City's mighty pretty. You see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona. Don't forget Winona, Kingman, Boston. San Bernardino, won't you get hip to this tip? Oh, when you take that California trip, get your kicks on Route 66. Get your kicks on Route 66. Oh, get your kicks on Route 66. <laughs> that was wonderful. That was wonderful. The Jill Bateman Trio, everyone. A great, great version of that song. I loved it. I loved it better than the original, yeah. I have to say. <laughs> Your voice is so lovely. Thank you, thank you. It's just lovely, and I love the way you move, and you guys really play. That's great, and I like the two different styles blending together. They are so Very different. nicely, very <laughs> nicely. How long have you been playing together? Seven years. Seven yep. years. Yep, yep. That's August wonderful. 2010, got thrown together. That's right. Thro oh, thrown now. There's a story behind ah, this. Come there's on. always stars. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, there is. Uh, we're kind of a spinoff of the Just Passing Through Band from the Yes, Beats. you are. And uh, Jill and Mike were kind of on the outer ring of that vortex. And um, we kind of took us about a year to put the brakes on that band. Mm -hmm. But when we did, I called him up and said, uh, here's a set list of 40 songs. First gig is in six days. And wow. That, that pretty much, pretty much. That's fantastic. You've been playing together ever since. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's right. Very good. Now, where do you guys play around town? I know you play Vino de Sedona. That's our big place mm -hmm. up here. Um, we... I just came up here from Phoenix um, mm -hmm. about a year now, and they're still down there. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> I know, What's so they're going. with you? Still sweating, <laughs> out. Still sweating it out. We're yeah. moving slow like that. So <laughs> we, we were there doing a lot of stuff. We were doing, oh, gosh, two, three times a week. Um, we were doing the herb box in Scottsdale on the Riverwalk, and that was really fun. But um, mostly we've done the Relics a couple times. Mm -hmm. and, the brewery. and the brewery. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we were there. We went in there to do a jam and on July 4th and ended up being the house band. That <laughs> was wow. like, okay, we'll stay. Yeah. So, um, oh, of course. Now, you guys do covers, but you also do original music. Yeah. You yeah. write original music. Mm -hmm. And then the next song that you're going to do is an original piece. Yep. Now, when you do original music, who writes? Is it everybody? Well, I guess you could say I'm the primary songwriter, mm -hmm. but of course they're all collaborations. Each song right. that we do, there's a little Jill in them and a little Mike in mm -hmm. them, and you know, they're just, they turn out to be great songs. Wow. Well, that's great. I look forward to, to hearing that. Now, you've got uh, a gig coming up third the week. 15th, the 15th. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The 15th at Vino de Sedona. Yep. Yep. That's a great way to see people. And this time of year, you're playing outside. Hopefully, hopefully. Mm -hmm. It depends on the rain and the, the cicadas. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Wow, you That's don't right. think about that, but the cicadas are deafening. Yeah. Oh, it's, cr it's crazy. <laughs> they do jams on Tuesday nights, and we've been bringing it inside because it's a little loud. Yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah, the cicadas are jamming louder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, how's, how long has everybody been playing and singing? Um, mm -hmm. There's 10 kids in my family, and all of them are pretty musical. Wow. My mom was a USO girl, and... So we just kept oh, it going. Ah, mom was USO. That's there what I'm go. picking up. Uh oh. <laughs> That's what I'm picking up because I love that era. Yeah. And I love the yeah. way they sing and they move and it's All so feminine swing. and lovely. Yeah. And yes. Yeah, she was absolutely. Great. So, Ro, how about you? How long you been playing? Uh, I guess I've been playing since I was about 13. Since you were 13? Yeah. Very good. Mike, how long? Well, I 
since I was about 14, since which you were 14. is over 50 years ago. Yeah, wow. So. wow. You're yeah, not supposed to say oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Right? Yeah. Oh, I know. That seems to be the age when we pick up mus musical well, there, And there was happens. so much great music then. Yeah. Yes. So it's just, I, I couldn't help it. I had to quit uh, playing trumpet and play the guitar. Oh, <laughs> my gosh, yes. I don't know how anybody doesn't play the guitar. The guitar is, is the greatest. Do you play an instrument as well, Jill, or just your voice? Um, a little bit guitar, but I picked up the ukulele uh, oh, cool. a couple months ago, so I'm trying to, I want to get like this ukulele thing going, and they're just fighting me on it. Oh, my gosh. But it's going to happen. If not with them, my sisters and my... <laughs> yeah, the other, the other nine. Yeah, yeah. You could have your own ukulele band. You're I, so I'm huge. So I'm waiting. I'm bringing everybody in. We're just going to do it. It's going to be all over. Sedona's going to all do the ukuleles, oh, too. Uh, they're taking the world by storm, those they youths. Are. It, it is pretty amazing. So, so well, much fun. It, you can definitely tell that you enjoy enjoy playing, you enjoy singing. Yeah, sure. the, there's an ease about the three of you together and alone that really, you know, shows how mm -hmm. easy this is for you. And that's really nice to see, especially with someone singing, you know, when you see someone that's really trying, <laughs> you're like, yay. <laughs> but someone that just flows naturally out of, I'm jealous that your mom was a US. You know, you would, hate to, you would hate to work with me because they're all usually telling me to shh, shh, because it's always coming out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah, it's always. Oh, so. no, I think that's wonderful. Music is such an expression of joy. That's really great. Mm -hmm. So when are you guys moving to the Verde Valley? Won't be too long. Mm, not too long. Jill, you keep pulling. We'll I keep pulling. Yeah, yeah. Everybody get out and pull when this you see him at the end of the season on the 15th. Mike and I. <laughs> well, geez, I'm <laughs> shocked really you haven't spontaneously hot. combusted this well, year. Yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. wife <laughs> keeps telling me she wants to sell the house and get an RV. And, hey, uh, so, great. You did. Cooler, so That's a great. It's much cooler talk me here. She'll one of these days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see next for you guys? What, what would you like to see coming into your lives as a, as a trio? Mm -hmm. we have well, we're list? you know we're still we're still going after all this time. Yeah. You know we're gonna Excellent. just keep doing what we do. We just can't help it. You know, yeah, this comes out. I bet. I'd like to just get into play more places. Up, yes. up here, you know, not mm -hmm. not only Sedona, but down here in the right well. Cottonwood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. They're yeah. looking for more places <laughs> to play. <laughs> Give it. Give oh it. my gosh, the venues: Old Town Cottonwood, Love Clarkdale, Love Jerome. Love yeah. This is an amazing. The Valley is amazing yes. for music. There is live music going. Seven days a week here. It's, it's, it's amazing. You just go in and start, just walk in and start singing, Jill. They'll be taken. <laughs> I have to get, bring my kazoo with me and I'm all set. I don't know about the kazoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had one of those on once. I don't know about the kazoo. We'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Ukuleles are widely accepted. Though. They are. They are. That would be adorable. A little person with a little guitar. <laughs> this is so cute. <laughs> it fits me. Well, that's right size. Get your hula skirt on. With a little, uh, oh gosh, and the coconuts, like the little mm. bobble head on the on your on the. Truck. They can wear the coconuts. <laughs> 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 so the next song that you're gonna sing is an original song. Mm -hmm. What's this one called? This is called Cherche la Femme. Cherche la Femme, oh, I like that a lot. And Ro, did you write it? I laid the foundation for the song mm -hmm. down on a trip to Paris, France. Ooh. And I was kind of a Arizona cowboy, a stranger in a strange land. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of the basis of the song. It's about finding somebody uh, from South Texas in Paris, France. Oh. And it was quite a unique experience. And wow. uh, so this song kind of spells that out a little bit. How neat. I love songs that are stories. Indeed. You know, they're, they're just so wonderful and enriching. Thank you so very much for being on the show. Uh, thank, thank you, you for having really us. a pleasure. You are a pleasure to have. Check out the JillBatemanTrio.com. Check that out, JillBatemanTrio.com. Also on Facebook. Yep. Am I missing anything? We have the website. We have a beautiful Facebook page. How else can we find you? Uh, just the local well, you know, venues. Yeah. The local venues. But yeah. Yeah. Tuesday night, come over to the Vino when we're jamming all the time. There you so, go. Yeah. Definitely the 15th. Well, thank you all very much for watching the Verde Valley Experience. Of course, you can watch us anytime on VerdeValleyTV.com. You can check us out on YouTube. And, of course, we'll be back again. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.
twice before in Paris. You know I can't remember when. The lights were dim in Cafe Lafayette. Ooh, Chiché Lefebvre. His music played for her love only. Her eyes embraced her careless heart. His every note said he was lonely. Ooh, a shy family. Played for her love only. His eyes embraced her careless heart. His every note said he was lonely. Ooh, she shall defend me. Ah, she The things he failed to do. His eyes and raised to kill his heart. He never felt that love in you. Oh, she said it fell. Oh, she said it fell.